Rocky Mountain Sasquatch Organization. We're taking you to the ghost town of Deadwood. It's an old gold mine ghost town. It was being used by a helicopter logging crew when they had three Bigfoot sightings in 24 hours. And in the rest of the summer, a lot of the loggers felt like they may have had Bigfoot experiences where they did not see the Bigfoot in 24 hours three Bigfoot sightings. It's just unprecedented. Um, five people saw it in the 24 hours. We're going to take you through the Bigfoot sightings and show you the area. The Deadwood mining town was abandoned in World War II and now a rancher owns part of it. He rents out some of the cabins that he refurbished. This is the old mining boss's cabin right here. This is where all the problems began. A bunch of the loggers that were camping here, some of them were looking for better accommodations and were thinking about using this and they come in and they found a large nest in the boiler room. We're going to take you into the boiler room and kind of show you around. But there was a nest in there and they could smell the musky stench of what they think was a large animal. They couldn't figure out what had made such a large nest what animal would have done that and they cleared it out and then later decided yeah we're not gonna use this i mean some of them were looking for better accommodations a lot of them were in trailers some of them were uh, renting refurbished cabins that the rancher had reclaimed and then others were in tents so i could see some of the tent people coming in here and saying can we use this then <laughs> check out the bats and stuff yeah so the large nest the bats i, I wouldn't want to stay in here either but after they cleared out the large nest i mean they had been here for nearly a month when they did this and then all of a sudden and they started having Bigfoot problems. Three Bigfoot sightings in 24 hours. And then after that, a lot of the people in the logging camp thought that they may have had Bigfoot experiences with the creature. After the first 24 hours, nobody saw the creature. A lot of people thought that they had Bigfoot experiences, but there was five people in three different uh, sighting events and we're going to walk you through each one of these sighting events. Me following the story and the timeline, everything seemed to have started here once they come in here and removed the nest out of the boiler room. That's when everything started. Perhaps the Bigfoot was living in this old mining boss's home. The first Bigfoot sighting was by the logger's water truck driver. He was about a half a mile away from the camp, down at the river, filling up the truck. He said it was about 3 a.m. and he was waiting for the truck to fill up. He had the floodlights on so he could see the hose in the water. He said that he had an overwhelming feeling that he was being watched. The Deadwood River is quite shallow and not very wide, so the other side of the river is very close. It's only about 25 feet across. He told us that he looked up and across the river to see a set of eyes that were watching him from behind a tree on the other side of the river. It was a very large and dark and very piercing eyes. He said it was much taller than a man and moved upright and quietly from one tree to the other all the time watching him. He said that he had driven water truck for many years and he had never encountered anything like this before. He put in his resignation the next day after the siding. That's pretty crazy. You know, this guy had been with the logging company for like 12 years. He was a seasoned logger, a seasoned outdoorsman, and whatever he saw that night was enough for him to pack up and leave his job of 12 years. Must have been pretty frightening. Later on that morning, the helicopter logging owner, his 14-year-old son, went deer hunting. It was the opening of the deer hunt season. He got up early and left the hunting camp. They were along the Deadwood River, which was a little more than a creek. He took out his rifle to see if he could get a buck that morning. He crossed the river and went up a hill to where he could get a better look of the river and the flats below. Our pilots were camped down the river about a quarter mile from our camp. As the boy was looking down towards the pilot's camp, he observed what he thought was a bear. It was down on the flats near the river. 
He thought it was a little unusual that the bear was walking very steadily on its hind legs, more like a human. The more he watched it, the more uncomfortable he began to feel. As he was watching it, it suddenly looked up and started staring back at him. He suddenly felt fear race through him as he felt his eyes lock onto it. He told us that he had never felt that feeling before or ever since. He said that it was very dark in color and was very tall and hairy. After it had stared at him for some time, it proceeded to walk towards him. He realized when it was moving in his direction, he turned around and started racing for camp as fast as he could. When he got to the camp, he ran into the fifth wheel and shut the door and locked it behind him. He then closed all the curtains and blinds. He was absolutely scared to death, and the thing that he saw coming at him, he couldn't get it out of his head, and he wouldn't come out of the camper until his mother came to pick him up a couple of days later. He kept the door locked all the time, the curtains drawn, even in broad daylight. The teenager described a dark brown to black covered creature, bipedal animal, that obviously had hands and not paws. The creature was somewhere near eight feet tall and would move from one tree to the next, staying behind each one, trying to stay hidden as it moved towards the witness. The trees in that area were around two feet thick and the thickness of the animal's torso was greater than the tree width. The witness felt a deep sense of fear. He said it felt like he was a quarry and was being stopped. He has not returned to the sighting area since. The final Bigfoot sighting was by the logging boss and his two sons. They were that later that evening they were up above the encampment deer hunting and something was stalking them. A bipedal creature, a large creature was following them. It was trying to stay hidden as it followed them. It was moving from tree to rock, rock to tree, and then it started screaming at them from behind the trees and rocks. So they made their way back to camp. Other loggers that had gone hunting claimed that while they were out they felt like something was watching them and stalking them and they also talked of a really strong stinky odor we're sitting on the edge of a wilderness area that's the largest wilderness untouched wilderness area in the lower 48 states there is what's the river named jenny river of no return there's the river of no return. We've been to where you just can't follow the river any longer unless you take a raft. The river of no return is part of the Salmon River that runs through this wilderness area. And uh, we're on the, the opposite side of the river of no return from what I understand. So between us and the river of no return, there's just nothing but forest, animal habitat, doesn't surprise me one bit that the surrounding areas are dozens of Bigfoot sightings that go back hundreds of years. I mean, even the Native Americans in this part of Idaho talked about seeing the creature. And back then, before the term Bigfoot was coined, they called them wild men. And the Native Americans also had many of their own names. A lot of them uh, were... Uh, you know, the wild man of the woods and in their language. I know from Utah where we're from, there's a tribe of Indian, the Shoshone. I don't recall the word that they used, but uh, when translated to English, it mean, meant the cannibal giants. That was their word for Bigfoot. All right, folks, well, Jenny, Derek, and I, uh, we got a lot more miles to put in Bigfooting this weekend. Of course, we know because someone saw a Bigfoot 20 years ago at this very location. All those sightings, Bigfoot doesn't sit on his thumb in one spot. So we're gonna have to spread out from this location and start looking around. And there's other Bigfoot sighting hotspots uh, and sightings from here that uh, we're gonna look into. 180, twisted, snapped down. This is the top of the branch that should have been up here. Anything could have been, though. Yeah. Like what's growing and what's not. All so you hear some currants that need to ripen up. And 
of these ones, already eaten them. Most of these are all eaten. More than likely the bears that have been up here eating them, but you know Bigfoot does. If he's an omnivore, he's going to just... A little bit redder ones right there in the middle. Yeah, they're eating the ripened ones as fast as they're ripening is what all it the, looks like. And all the raspberries are gone too. They're all gone. Oh, there's some. Great food source right by a water source. Uh, great place for a game cam. Yeah, yeah no kidding.